Today sees the launch of the RTX 4080 12 gig. Sorry, 4070 Ti 12 gig. A card that has had a lot of bad press even before it launched. And we'll be going through exactly how it performs today. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. With this thermal take tough power, 1350 watt fully modular power supply with full ATX 3.0 compatibility, a smart zero fan and PCIe Gen 5 ready, my PC will have all the life it needs. It's alive, it's alive. To find out more, click the link in the description below. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm sick at the moment, so apologies if I sound like a more husky version of myself, but hopefully that shows my commitment to making videos for you all. It's also worth addressing the elephant in the room. This card, the 4070 Ti, was the card that never was, or never should have been, or kind of was but then wasn't, and then was something else. Yeah, it was a mess from its first inception, and for one reason. Based on consumer feedback and the fact that this was going to be labelled as an RTX 4080 with 12 gig of GDDR6X memory, the general consensus was that the gaming community weren't happy to have the wall pulled over their eyes. So uh, yeah, Nvidia went back to the drawing board and came up with the same product, but now branded slightly differently. Now branded as a 4070 Ti. The card, it kind of should have always been, and for one big key reason. The GPU core itself. While the RTX 4080 uses the AD103 GPU, the now 4070 Ti uses the AD104 core instead. And that was the first big sign that Nvidia were trying to push a product that should have never been part of the 4080 range in the first place, let alone coming in at $899 MSRP. So with that out of the way, let's talk about specs. So like the other 40 series cards, it's based on the Ada Lovelace architecture on TSMC's 4N process node. So you get all of the latest features that the AD family bring to the table, including the latest generation RT and Tensor cores, of which we will go through ray tracing and DLSS, including DLSS 3 performance a little later on. So with the AD104 GPU, we now have a GPU core that comes in at 295 millimeters squared, which is actually a lot smaller than the previous generation. And it now comes with 35.8 billion transistors, which is kind of just over double the amount found in a 3070 Ti, which as I say is on a larger die as well. The card also comes with 12 gig of GDDR6X memory, which is a step up from the 8 gig on the 3070 Ti, but still not enough to even get close to the 20 gig of memory that the new AMD 7900 XT packs. And considering now we've been informed that the pricing on the 4070 Ti is $799 instead of the $899 that you know, for the same product, different name, 4080 12 gig was going to be launching for, it's definitely at a more palatable level now, and undercuts the 7900 XT by $100, so can't be bad, right? The 4070 Ti also drops the memory bus down from 256 bit on the 3070 Ti to 192 bit bus. Though again, as it's a different architecture, this means very little in the grand scheme of things. So $799 is definitely a better proposition than the cancelled 4080 12 gig. And for that money, you get 7,680 CUDA cores, 240 texture mapping units, 80 render output units, 60 RT cores, and 240 tensor cores. And also a significant bump in the L2 cache compared to the predecessor, which is now up to 48 megabytes. What's interesting, and something we found on the RTX 4080, is that compared to the predecessor, in this case, the 3070 Ti, some of the specs such as the ROPs are actually less on this card compared to last generation. But as we know from the rest of the 40 series cards, it's not just a numbers game and there's kind of a lot more to it than that. Speed wise, the reference clock speeds of the 4070 Ti come in with a base clock of 2310 MHz, a boost clock of 2610 MHz, and a memory clock of 1313 MHz, or 21 gigabit per second effective. Though AIB models may of course differ, which then brings me on to the card I have here today which is the Gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti Gaming OC. We will have a separate video going through the Gigabyte card, what it has to offer in terms of cooling, power and performance, along with overclocking shortly, while today sees us focusing purely on the AD104 GPU and what that's able to do from a gaming performance standpoint. So make sure you're subscribed if you want kind of more of an in-depth dive into the Gigabyte card, along with other cards that come into our studio in the meantime, like the ASUS Tough model we have here. 
So definitely make sure you stick around for that. So to touch on the Gigabyte card briefly, it's what you'd expect from a gaming OC card in terms of the style and design. And though you could argue that the 70 Ti range of cards have always been more, I guess, aimed at the mainstream gaming market and those wanting to play at 1440p or to dabble in gaming at 4K, it's still a very large card. Coming in at 336 millimeters long, 140 millimeters tall, and will take up two and a half slots in your case. In typical 40 series style, it uses a single 12 VH PWR power connector as expected, and a reference 4070 Ti will come with a 285 watt TDP with a recommended 600 watt minimum PSU. Obviously, AIB cards may have higher power limits, something we will discuss on all of the cards in future content, and that's, yeah, something that we'll look at when we talk about power, overclocking, thermals, and kind of how they all work to each other. Now, the Gaming OC model here, as you'd expect, will command, I guess, a small premium over a reference model, of which Nvidia aren't actually releasing a Founders Edition for this series, but AIBs will have the option to release their own cards at MSRP. For Gigabyte, it will likely be an Eagle variant, while the Gaming OC normally demands about another 10% or so more cost on top. So lots of numbers, specs, and all that good stuff, which I feel is important, as the 4070 Ti is the card that was never meant to be, at least in its current form. But now that it's here though, it's worth noting that for our tests, we tested using 15 games, and due to the 40 series as a whole being let's say so powerful, we're going to put our attention onto 1440p and 4K gaming as you know, under 1080p gaming there is an obvious bottleneck. Though remember that higher end cards like the 4080 and 4090 do experience the same scenario at 1440p as well, hence why some of the results for those cards may just look a bit kind of off. We will also be sharing this data and much more over on our Patreon, so definitely check that out if you want to consume a bucket load more data to see how things compare as a whole. Now for our testing, all GPUs were tested on our Intel Core i9 12900K based test system using the ASUS Z690 Maximus Hero motherboard with 32GB of Patriot Viper Venom 6200MHz memory. Resizable bar was enabled for all GPUs and the RTX 4070 Ti was tested using the 527.62 driver. Other cards were tested on older drivers due to this being a new driver specifically catered for this card, though we will update our data as time goes on, and all cards were tested on Windows 11 21H2. So with all that out of the way, let's get in to the glorious benchmarks. So kicking things off with synthetic benchmarks and Time Spy Extreme, where we do see a clear uptake from the 3070 Ti with the 4070 Ti coming in with a 42% better score and 51% better graphic score. This now puts the 4070 Ti just below last generation's flagship 3090 Ti, though the newest offering from AMD still manages to push ahead. In Port Royal, which is a ray tracing based benchmark, we find the 4070 Ti again just behind the 3090 Ti, though this time the stronger ray tracing performance now puts it ahead of the 7900 XT, though only with a 4% margin. Again though, the uplift from the 3070 Ti is substantial at 61% overall in the score and 60% in the FPS. In more of a productivity focused benchmark, we do see the 4070 Ti coming in middle of our stack, with performance that rivals the 3090 Ti. Sure, the extra memory will account for some extra performance, but it's still nice to see such a large uplift from the generation before. Moving on to games and starting things off with a Plague Tale Requiem, where we start to see our first instance of bottleneck on both the RTX 4080 and RTX 4090. And this is something we'll look to address when either the 7000X 3D processors launch, or possibly sooner, with a 13900KS, which is said to launch soon. At 4K, things align better with the 4070 Ti sitting in the middle of our stack. It does see an uplift of around 46% from its predecessor, which also puts it just ahead of the 3080 Ti, though it does fall short just behind the the RX 7900 XT, though as this card is now technically $100 cheaper, it's starting to look a bit more attractive. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Valhalla and at 1440p again, the 4070 Ti falls behind the 7900 XT, which comes in 13% faster in the averages. This does again put the 4070 Ti ahead of the 3090 Ti and 6950 XT, both of which are last generation's flagships. At 4K, the more expensive 7900 XT comes in with a 14% better performance lead than the 4070 Ti, which has already seen a healthy 38% increase over the 3070 Ti. This puts it close to the performance of the 6950 XT and just ahead of the 3080 Ti, which again shows some strong value for money, but let's see how it does in some other titles. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 
2 at 1440p again, we see a huge uplift in performance from its Turing counterpart, which also pushes it ahead of the 3090Ti by just under 9%, though the 6950XT still manages to creep ahead, though only by a small margin. It's very much a similar story at 4K with the new AMD cards blasting ahead, while the 4070 Ti just manages to pass the 3090 Ti, though last generation 6900 XT still holds a small lead over it, though was much more expensive at launch anyway. In control at 1440p on the high preset, the 4070 Ti and 3090 Ti battle it out again, though the newer card does give 6% better performance in the 1% lows, which could lead to a better overall gameplay experience for a prolonged amount of time. The 7900 XT from AMD still manages an 11% lead over the 4070 Ti, though it is around 12% more expensive compared to a reference 4070 Ti. At 4K, the 4070 Ti comes in with almost identical performance to the 3080 Ti 12GB, though it does have stronger performance in the 1% lows. Again, the 7900 XT pushes ahead by just under 9%, but considering my thoughts on the 7900 XT was that it was too expensive in the first place, it does lead to an interesting discussion. Cyberpunk at 1440p on the Ultra preset again sees the 4070 Ti sitting just below the 3090 Ti flagship from last generation, though it is able to match it in the 1% lows. Even at 1440p, last generation 6900 XT still manages to push ahead by quite some margin, but does fall extremely behind in them dips. 4K sees the AMD 6900 series drop back down, while the 4070 Ti still gives some fairly strong performance, which perfectly matches the RTX 3080 12 gig in both the averages and 1% lows. Considering you can now pick up a 3080 Ti for $899 or the 7900 XT, then the 4070 Ti isn't looking so great anymore. Death Stranding at 1440p shows some pretty clear bottlenecks due to our CPU, which puts the 4070 Ti at the top of our chart, and the RTX 4090 more towards the middle. I'm showing this clearly to show that performance is strong, but not necessarily utilised in the way that it could be with certain unreleased CPUs. Moving on to 4K, and the game just shows some very odd results overall. While the 4070 Ti again gives strong performance, there's definitely some form of optimizations that could be done on the RTX 4080 and higher, and is one of the key titles I want to relook at with a different processor in the near future. In Doom Eternal at 1440p, the 4070 Ti manages to push ahead from everything that last generation has to offer, though the 6950 XT was very close behind, with a less than 1% gap between them and identical 1% lows. At 4K, the 4070 Ti finally manages to match the performance of the more expensive 7900 XT, though it does come with slightly better 1% lows, which arguably also means it matches the performance of the RTX 3090 Ti. In Dying Light 2 at 1440p, the 4070 Ti does manage to come in around 7% faster than the 3090 Ti, though still falls behind AMD's flagship from last generation, though only by 3%, while again the more expensive 7900 XT pushes ahead with performance that's around 8% faster. Moving up to 4K, the 4070 Ti falls behind a few of last generation's cards, including the 3080 Ti and 3090 Ti, and manages to match the 3080 12GB, which, as I mentioned, can be had for around the same money as what this card is launching. For. In F122, the uplift from the 3070 Ti is modest at only 6%, which puts the 4070 Ti just below the 4080, which clearly shows some extreme levels of throttling due to the CPU. While at 4K, things align much better, with the 4070 Ti now pushing slightly ahead of the 3090 Ti, though the RX 6950 XT still manages to come out slightly ahead. In Far Cry 6, the 4070 Ti sits slap bang where you'd expect it to, just below the RTX 4080 and above everything from AMD and Nvidia from last generation, while also giving some extra performance in the 1% lows. The RTX 4090 does show some severe bottleneck at this resolution, especially with them dips, so it does throw, I guess, the whole chart off just a little bit. 4K alleviates that bottleneck and sees the 4070 Ti drop down the list, now sitting just below the 3090 Ti. Again, while the increase in performance of 41% over the 3070 Ti is nice to see, the 7900 XT still sits 18% ahead of it in this test. In Fortnite at 1440p on the Epic preset, we find the 4070 Ti again just sitting below the 3090 Ti in both the average FPS and 1% lows, along with a pretty decent uplift from the 3070 Ti as well by around 46%. At 4K, we see a similar 40% increase in performance generation to generation, which then sees the 4070 Ti falling slightly down the stack, sitting just below the 3080 Ti, but with better performance than last generation's AMD GPUs. 
Horizon Zero Dawn sees some pretty awful results at 1440p, with the 4070 Ti sitting below the performance from everything else we tested apart from the 3070 Ti. It still manages a 28% lead over its predecessor, but just falls short against everything else, and by quite some margin in some cases. 4K redeems the 4070 Ti slightly, with it now sitting below the 7900 XT, but cards from the 3080 series still sit just above it, and can be had for around the same price right now. Based on this test alone, the 4070 Ti is just too expensive for what's on offer. Spider-Man at 1440p sees a very distinct bottleneck to the 40 series cards, so apart from showing you the results, there really isn't much to talk about due to the results being so skewed. 4K makes a lot more sense and again sees the 4070 Ti just below the 7900 XT from AMD. Generally, I'd comment on how the 7900 XT has an MSRP that's $100 higher, but with the card we've tested being a gaming OC from Gigabyte, it's actually likely to be closer price-wise to the reference 7900 XT we tested it against. Microsoft Flight Sim is probably the game where CPU bottleneck is the most obvious, and again at 1440p, that's very, very clear to see. The only way around this is at that resolution is to either use a 5800X 3D and or to utilize DLSS 3, which we will be looking at very shortly. 4K sees the bottleneck pack its bags and sees the 4070 Ti and 7900 XT fighting with just one FPS between them, though cards like the RTX 3080 12GB and 3080 Ti still manage to come out faster overall. Finally, in Watch Dogs Legion at 1440p, we find the 4070 Ti pushing ahead of the 3090 Ti Turing Base flagship though it still falls dramatically behind the 7900 XT by a margin of around 15%. It's the same story at 4K with the 7900 XT coming in 18% faster overall, which doesn't put the 4070 Ti in a bad light, but I just feel other options are available if you're looking to spend that amount of cash. So as always, a bucket load of data, and I'll freely admit, it became a bit monotonous halfway through as it you know, kind of performs where you expect it to, though in some cases it did feel like it fell maybe a little short. And part of that blame is down to Nvidia, while the other part really does fall down to the processor used, as it really does rear its ugly bottlenecked head, which just throws off a lot of the results in many cases. Now, based on that and that alone, I feel that the 4070 Ti could, and it's a big could, become better in the near future. And it's something we'll definitely look at when faster processors come into our studio from both AMD and Intel. For now, focusing on the data that we have and knowing that the card is aimed at 1440p gaming with some light 4K gaming on the side, the 4070 Ti does give us some strong performance, with a 39% performance increase over the 3070 Ti when looking at the 15 games in an overall average. We also see that the 4070 Ti does fall a little bit short when compared to the 7900 XT, which does offer up 9% more performance overall, but obviously there is a cost implication for that extra performance. The 4070 Ti does come in slightly stronger than the 3090 Ti in both the averages and the 1% lows, which is pretty impressive given its price point, but then as we move up to 4K, we find the 3090 Ti just manages to push ahead of the 4070 Ti in the averages, but then falls a little bit behind in the 1% lows. Now, this is pretty impressive considering the launch price of the 3090 Ti, though the newly launched 7900 XT, still manages to come in better by around 9% in the averages and a smaller 7% in the 1% lows. So pure rasterization, I guess could be looked at in two ways. The first being that the 4070 Ti at 1440p, which is where this card is aimed at, does better than a card that was over double the price at its launch. Though I made that clear at the time that it was severely overpriced in the first place, and you could argue there is some CPU bottlenecking going on there. The other area is that this is a custom AIB card, so it does demand a premium over a reference 4070 Ti, which then puts it, I guess, around the same price as the 7900 XT, which beats it in both 1440p and 4K. This is, as I mentioned, partly the fault of Nvidia, but also the fact that the new 7000 series cards are so good in pure rasterization. Now, an area where Nvidia have always typically done better is in ray tracing, even though AMD have stepped up their game in that area too. So, what I'm trying to say is, I guess it's worth taking a look at how the 4070 Ti does in that area. So starting things off with A Plague Tale Requiem, where the game has upscaling but no ray tracing, and the 4070 Ti comes in with around 45% better performance than the 3070 Ti when comparing no DLSS, and then the same when DLSS is set to performance mode. 
Being a 40 series though, the 47 TTI is then able to harness the power of frame generation in DLSS 3, which boosts the performance by another 34% at 109 frames per second. In control, we see strong gains over the predecessor 3070 TTI, and with ray tracing enabled, you do see a drop in performance as expected. Though, does mean that it sits just above the 7900 XT in ray tracing performance, which is great given the price point, but does show that AMD have improved quite dramatically for that generation. Enabling DLSS then pushes the performance back up by a whopping 100%, which I think anyone who's played control will agree that DLSS is very much needed on max settings with ray tracing. In Cyberpunk at 4K with ray tracing turned on, we saw some dips, though this still saw a nice increase from last generation, and pushes both the average and the 1% lows higher than the 7900 XT. With upscaling enabled, we managed to unlock another 181% performance compared to just having ray tracing enabled, which keeps it ahead of the 7900 XT, while DLSS 3 gives us another 45% of extra performance, putting us above levels of performance that the RTX 4080 saw with DLSS without frame generation. Destroy All Humans 2 again saw nice increases in performance generation to generation, while the 7900 XT beat it in all-out rasterization. Luckily, as the game has DLSS and not FSR, Nvidia do have the opportunity to fight back, seeing a 74% increase in performance with DLSS on, which is only just behind the performance of the RTX 4080. Enabling DLSS 3, which includes frame generation, sees a small bump, but nothing noticeable like we saw on other Ada Lovelace Beast GPUs. Spider-Man includes ray tracing and DLSS along with frame generation, and here we see results that are much closer between the 47 TTI and 7900 XT, even when frame generation is turned on. The 7900 XT and 47 TTI manage to match each other in typical upscale performance or DLSS versus FSR, while DLSS 3 just gave that little extra, allowing them to win in this title. Microsoft Flight Sim still has its demons in terms of CPU bottleneck, and while DLSS did boost the performance by over 45%, the clear winner here is when DLSS 3 is enabled, which sees the performance increase by over 88%, with 1% lows also powering ahead. So much so that the RTX 4080 could still make do with a faster CPU, as it actually scores worse here. Lastly, in Watch Dogs Legion, again, we see a plentiful uplift from the 3070 Ti, though the 7900 XT still manages to come out on top by 18%. When ray tracing is enabled, things start to perform neck and neck, while DLSS manages to claw back some performance, giving us a balance of ray tracing and solid performance. So it's pretty clear to see that Nvidia still holds the torch in upscaling technologies, which when coupled with ray tracing does allow for some pretty stunning visuals, while also getting some solid numbers in terms of performance. The other area of performance that I do want to, I guess, touch on comes down to thermals, power, and of course, cooling. We will have more content delving into the Gigabyte card as a whole, but to talk about the 4070 Ti as a GPU core, regardless of the cooler, we booted up F122 and stuck it on a loop. During this, we found the GPU temperature sitting around the 64 degrees mark throughout the run, and the memory junction temperature sitting at about the same point the whole time at a pretty steady 66 degrees. Our hotspot temperature managed to stay at a relatively modest 74 degrees throughout the test, with only minor fluctuations a few degrees either way. That lower temperature is probably what allows the core frequency to stay so steadily boosted to above 2800 MHz during our test, with the GPU remaining around the 260 watt mark with the occasional spike up to 270 watts in a few places, while the fans stayed at a pretty reasonable 1400 RPM which was fairly quiet overall. So, the 4070 Ti. It was always going to be a weird one because of the bad press it had from the start when it was going to be part of the 4080 family. And while I appreciate that it has been brought down a peg or two, I feel like it needs to come down just a little bit more. I mean, I'm not a GPU manufacturer and I'm not pretending to be, but performance wise was just too close to the 7900 XT in pure rasterization. And when I looked at that card, I said that it didn't really make sense because of how close that was at least in terms of pricing, to the 7900 XTX. Instead, that should have been a 7800 XT, which would then put the 4070 Ti as more of a 4070 non-Ti, and should have come in at $699 instead of $799. I don't think I'm expecting too much, but I'd like to think that the gaming community would agree with me on that one, so let me know if you do down in the comments section below. I'm not saying it's a bad card, but it's just maybe trying to be something it's not. That coupled with the fact that this card does have a slightly higher boost clock and therefore a higher price over an MSRP based 4070 Ti just makes it a tough one to recommend. 
Also, factoring in that some of the 3080 series cards can be had for about the same amount just adds another spanner into the works. Yes, it did outperform the 3090 Ti in a lot of tests, and that shines a completely different light onto it, but then it loses that battle at 4K. Now, I know, Nvidia will say it's not a 4K card, but when you're looking at 1440p, you have to admit it's tempting to try 4K, even on lower settings. And that's, I guess, kind of its downfall. Maybe as we look at other models, like the ASUS Tough one and other models that are gonna be coming in, I don't know, things may change a bit. But I think AMD and Nvidia are just expecting too much of the average gamer, especially in a time where the cost of living is so high and people don't necessarily have close to $1,000 to splash just on a graphics card. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you agree with me. Yes, its saving grace comes down to ray tracing, especially when coupled with upscaling technology, where Nvidia clearly are victorious, and DLSS3 just opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. But at this point, where GPUs are so fast, we actually need processors to kind of catch up a little more, to really give you a balanced system that can offer the very best. What I'm trying to say is that the potential is there, but it's just missed the mark ever so slightly. And as I mentioned in other 40 series content, I love the 40 series as it has actually got me excited about gaming again. It just needs a little refinement in the price and what other components you pair it with. Until then, in my own kind of personal opinion, I would wait. Not long, but just a little bit to see what happens, especially with new announcements coming from CES 2023. Until then, what do you think of the 4070 Ti? Am I bang on the money, unlike Nvidia? Or do you think it's a good proposition for the price? It's definitely a nice step up from the 3070 Ti, but it's just a little too rich for my blood. That aside, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and want to see all of that testing data in one place, among getting tons of other exclusive and really cool benefits, then our Patreon is linked down below. Thanks for bearing with me, as you can tell. I have got a sickness bug at the moment, so uh, hopefully the video comes out all right. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys, bye bye.